Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got Lauren LaRosa, our special guest host in the building, and let's get into some front page news. What up, Tiz? What's going on, DJ NV, Lauren, and Charlemagne the Guy? Good morning, Breakfast Club family. Good Yo. morning. All right, well, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Congress now. They got three days to make a deal. Three days to make a deal. Unfortunately, we have seen this repeat over and over and over, uh, and they still do not have a plan. Now, the government funds run out at 12.01 Eastern Sunday. Uh, now, Democrats are presenting a united front, but the problem is on the Republican side, there's some internal fighting. They're calling it a Republican civil war uh, because some conservatives, uh, House Republicans, are pushing for deep spending cuts, even, even threatening to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy. You may remember, for those who follow this, in the very beginning, when Speaker McCarthy McCarthy uh, was put, put in his seat. They had told him, you know, basically they would oust him if he uh, got too cozy with Democrats. And so they are uh, definitely making that threat again, saying that if he makes a deal, they will certainly be trying to remove him from his seat. He was asked how he felt about it. Take a listen to his response. How much of the fact that if you do cut a deal with Democrats, there could be a vote to push you out? Yeah, how much I'm is that not, driving I'm your decision making right nothing now? Nothing drives my decision. If that was driving my decision, wouldn't that dri driven my decision making 15 times before? My, but you could you have know, cut a deal with Democrats and that could be the end of it. Did I votes. cut a deal then? No, so it could did, be I, did I cut a deal then? When? When? For the... When I went 15 rounds? No, I'm talking about right now. For okay, but, but, but let, me, let me explain something to you. I'm no different than I was then or before. My whole focus, what's in my mind, what drives me, is the American people. Yeah, I'm right. not worried <laughs> if someone makes a motion. I'm not worried if somebody votes no. It's a damn shame that these folks are willing to let the government shut down for political reasons. I don't believe they'll let it happen, but it's just, you know, just the fact they are willing to do it shows that none of these people are really as America first as they claim to be. Mm -hmm. Claiming to be about the American people, yeah, right. And he's lying, talking about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do anything because I'm worried about the people because actually the impeachment hearing, uh, which we'll talk about in the second hour, was absolutely done because they told him he needed to do it or he would lose his position. So, uh, you know, we always say this on the Republican side, they, they, they push a hard line. So oh, absolutely. It's just yeah, it's just a few of them, uh, and they're, they're really, really holding the line to say, you do this or else. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they're going to move uh, this weekend. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, Lauren LaRosa is our special guest host this morning, and Tez is here. Good morning, Tez. Good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Charlemagne the God. Good Peace morning. Says. All right. Well, let's talk, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about the first impeachment. Yeah, the first impeachment hearing uh, was no information on President Joe Biden. Uh, they started this yesterday. Their star witnesses testifying that they lacked proof that he committed an impeachable offense. Again, didn't bring any information about his conduct or any support for Republicans accusations that he entered into corrupt overseas business deals. And Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett had a word about it. Let's take a listen. When we're talking about somebody that's committed high crimes, it's at least indictments, let's say 32 counts related to unauthorized retention of national security secrets, seven counts related to obstructing the investigation, three false statements, one count of conspiracy to defraud the United States, falsifying business records, conspiracy to defraud the United States, two counts related to efforts to obstruct the vote certification proceedings, one count of conspiracy to violate civil rights, 23 counts related to forgery or false document statements, eight counts related related to soliciting and I could go on because he's got 91 counts pending right now but I will tell you what the president has been guilty of he has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally and that is the only evidence that they have brought forward until they find some evidence we need to get back to the people's work which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States and I will yield mm -hmm. mm. Charlemagne guess she told them <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah she, she sounds like she uh she know what the hell she talking about i like her 
<laughs> well, she told him what time it was uh, when she talks about, you know, how we need to be focused on uh, what is happening in this government shutdown. Uh, she is absolutely right where the focus should be. I didn't mention this last hour, but want to just kind of throw that in so people can know the uh, severity of what we're talking about with the shutdown. FEMA is actually cutting disaster aid right now, you know, as they're preparing uh, for this shutdown. They're cutting about $8 billion. So uh, if there's a disaster and, and folks need help, you know, that emergency help is going to hit different when you don't have the money. We also talked about earlier in the week when I covered this story, what actually happens with the shutdown. So we're talking about furloughing employees, employees not being paid, having to get paid on the back end. Some will never get paid at all if they're not essential employees. And we're talking about uh, jobs possibly being cut as well. So the shutdown is a real thing. It does affect uh, the American people. It trickles down, especially when we talk about removing a lot of those programs. So this is a real thing that people should be paying attention to this weekend. And I will have an update on Monday. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, nothing about this government shutdown says I care about people. You right. cannot say you care about the American people if you are willing to let this happen in any way, shape, or form. Especially during right now when every inflation and all that stuff. That's is right. I have a friend, um, when we reported this earlier this week, Tess, when you talked about it, one of my mm-hmm. friends reached out to me and she was talking to me about what she's going through. She's preparing for and she is not going to be paid. She has a son. She has a home. Like, you know wow. what I mean? And she's mm-hmm. literally preparing to go without pay and will still have to work. Wow. Yep. And see, that's that's the key. I want people to know, like, they're, some of these people will not be paid, but still have to work. You know, yes. so imagine that, that was crazy. You know, yeah. Imagine that, you know, just going in every week and still, you know, having to having to wait on your check. So that's that that, that doesn't feel good at all. Absolutely. Well, now let's jump into Donald Trump. What's going on with Donald Trump? Yeah, I just want to give a quick update uh, on the Trump racketeering case uh, in Georgia that we've been covering here on Front Page News. A decision was made after Mark Meadows, his former chief of staff, tried to get his case, because remember, it's several of them that are uh, on trial or will be on trial. He tried to get his case moved to the federal court. So once Trump attorney seen that that did not work, uh, then now they said they're just going to go ahead and let it stay in the state court in Atlanta. A lot of people were shocked about this because he was really pushing for the federal Uh, For this to be a federal case, you may wonder why it is because federal probably would have, again, just assumption would have benefited him more once it would at one, it would not have been televised. And two, they believe he would have had a a possibility for a better jury. But now they're saying, hey, we're going to keep it in state court uh, and it will be televised, unlike in federal court, which I think is a good thing. So maybe Trump's folks think is a good thing now as well. Uh, His attorney said the decision is based on his well-founded confidence that the honorable court intends to fulfill and completely protect his constitutional right to a fair trial. So Fonnie Willis uh, will be moving forward on that. And I look forward to covering that here right on Front Page News. Keep Go ahead, updated. Fannie Mae. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Fannie. <laughs> you like calling her Fannie. <laughs> Fannie Mae don't play. You hear me? <laughs> well, that is Front Page News. Thank you, Tiz. Well, let me, hold on. Let, let me ask you this though before we go, Charlamagne uh, and DJ Envy and Lauren. Them televising it. You think that's going to benefit who, whose side do you think is going to benefit more? You think Trump is using that, you know, to get his people uh, turned up or of course is it, it benefits is it Trump. Yeah, because, I think anything with television or any type of microphone whatsoever benefits right. him because he's the most entertaining. He's and they going to put on the show. I think y'all forget that Donald Trump is a celebrity. He was he's always been a celebrity. He was the executive producer of Celebrity Apprentice. He loves the fact that there's going to be cameras in the courtroom. Of course, it's going to benefit him. A hundred percent. The Democrats love it because they, they say, let's lay it out and look at all the evidence and let the people decide, you know, if, if it's a, a good case or not. People so have already they decided want- because nobody cares yeah. about facts in this generation. They care about feelings. There is nothing you're going to say to change people's minds about Donald Trump. And Donald Trump knows that. He told us that years ago. Donald Trump said, I can go out in the middle of the street, shoot somebody in the head and wouldn't lose any supporters or anything of that nature. He knows this. Mm-hmm. Nobody mm-hmm. cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. Y'all putting cameras in that courtroom. Y'all giving Donald Trump a chance to entertain. And God damn it, he going to put on a show. If y'all thought Nino Brown testimony was good at the end of New Jack City, y'all wait till Donald Trump get in that courtroom. Okay? I can't wait. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tez. You have a great weekend. You too as well. Thank you. Oh, and make sure you subscribe to Tesla and Figaro's podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network, and follow at Tesla and Figaro on all social media platforms. All right. Now, when we come back, the legend... Omar Epps will be joining us. We're going to kick it with Omar Epps. He has a new book. It's called Nubia the Reckoning. Yep. And we're going to kick it with him next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Uh, in the morning. The Breakfast Club.